Hi everyone, this is Ben Dichter, and this is the tutorial for advanced write using data pipe in NeuroData Without Borders. So if you're using MAT and WB and you have very large data that's cumbersome, this tutorial could help you deal with that data. So um, often in neurophysiology, we have data sets that are quite large. If you have extracellular electrophysiology data, for instance, that is at very high sampling rate, high channel count, long sessions, um, you could have tens or hundreds of gigabytes or even terabytes of data per session. And um, similarly for optical physiology, particularly if you're going into um, multi-planar images, you could have very large data sets. So the question is, how do you manage um, this really large data? And uh, luckily, HDF5 has really great tools for managing large data. This is really one area where they excel. And Matt and WB has recently developed tools to expose some of the some of the settings that you can set when writing HDF5 in order to leverage some of these tools. So the two main things that, um, that you might want to consider doing if you have really large data um, are compression and iterative write. And both of these techniques are going to use the types.untyped.datapipe object. Okay, so I just want to walk you through the simplest example for how to use this. We're going to just generate this random data set, um, random integers from 0 to 100. We're going to make a 250 by 250 by 70 data set. So in order to use the data pipe object, all you need to do is instead of inputting this data into your constructor for a class, you just wrap this data in a types.untyped.datapipe object. And this is the most basic way to leverage chunking and compression. All of the, the chunk settings, including the gzip level, the chunk size, the max size, all of these are going to be set automatically by Matt and WB. So this may or may not be the best option for you, but I just wanted to show you um, that if you want to leverage compression in MAT and WB, it's as simple as wrapping your data in a single line of code. Now, in order to explain all of the different settings that are available to you, I'm gonna to have to give you a little bit of background information about, um, about what this compression is within HDF5. So you're probably all familiar with downloading a compressed file off of the internet and then uncompressing that file in your operating system. So the way that data sets are compressed in HDF5 is very similar. It's using gzip, which is often the same compression algorithm used for files. And um, the difference here is that we're not going to be gzipping the entire NWB file. Basically what HDF5 allows you to do is zip specific data sets within um, an NWB file. And when you do this, you have the potential to use way less storage. So this could be really useful if you have really large data sets. Um, and particularly if you are able to intelligently choose your parameters based on things you know about the data. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit. And um, the nice thing about doing this in HDF5 is that you don't have to worry about all these compression settings when you're reading the data. Basically, all of this is stored within HDF5 so that when a user comes and tries to read this data set, if they say, okay, give me elements 1 through 100, then HDF5 will automatically go in and decompress the chunks that it needs to in order to read that data and just serve that data directly to the user as if this data were uncompressed. So that's a really nice thing here. We can specialize how we want to write this data in intricate ways, but then when it's read, the user doesn't have to worry about any of that. Okay, so by default, we're going to choose compression level three, and we're going to let Matt and WB automatically decide our chunk size. So I'm gonna go through um, the data pipe arguments that allow you to specialize this. So the first argument here is max size. 
So this sets the maximum size that your HDF5 data set can be. Um, this is really important when you're using iterative writing. Essentially, when you're creating an HDF5 data set, you automatically need to set what the current size is and what the maximum size of this data set can be. And um, if you want to iteratively write this data set, you're going to need to um, increase the maximum size beyond the original size of the data set. You can use the inf value um, to make the data set unbounded in particular dimensions. So the next argument is data. This is simply the data that you are going to compress. Um, if you are doing iterative write, then you don't need to supply this data. You can write an entirely empty data set. The axis argument is the axis onto which you're going to be appending your data. So this says, okay, we've got this block of data, and then um, as I'm appending to this data set, which direction am I appending to? This data type argument establishes the data type of data. Now, if you supply data, which you will often when you're just trying to chunk and you're not trying to iterative write, then you're going to be supplying data, and um, the data type object will automatically get the data type from data. It'll just read the data type directly. But if you're doing um, iterative write, then you um, then you may not be supplying data to begin with, in which case you need to tell HDF5 what's the data type going to be of this data set. Okay, so the next argument is chunk size. Data sets can either be continuous or they can be chunked. If you're using data pipe, then you're either going to be using compression or iterative write. In both cases, you need to chunk the data set. So it's automatically going to be chunked. This option gives you the ability to set that chunk size. And th what this basically means is that instead of storing the, the data in one continuous block on the disk, it's going to break the data up into chunks and store, the, um, and store those chunks potentially in different places on the disk. It's going to kind of control the order in which the data is written onto the disk. And then HDF5 stores where all of these different chunks are and kind of reassembles them on the fly when you're reading the data set. The next argument is compression level. This one is pretty self-explanatory. Um, if you're using gzip, gzip has a setting from 0 to 9, which establishes the compression level. We have chosen to give you a default level of 3, and um, we've chosen this because this is also the default that MATLAB uses if you save in the HDF5 version of .mat files. So this matches um, their settings there. There's an additional argument that you can set called has shuffle, and this takes a Boolean value of true or false. And um, this is an extra setting that you can use on gzip to shuffle the bytes. So gzip works better if you have bytes that um, are, have runs of similar values. So this is kind of an extra setting that shuffles those bytes in order to create those runs of similar values. It generally improves your compression ratio and um, without much speed penalty. So in general, this is usually a good idea to turn on. It's also lossless, which means that if you compress data and then decompress it, the values that you get when you decompress are going to be the same as when as what you started with. Finally, we have the offset value, which sets the, um, the offset that you're using when you append to the array. So usually you can let data pipe handle this for you, but if you want to overwrite data, then you can um, alter the offset value. Okay, so now that we have these arguments out of the way, I'm going to show you how to use them. So um, this is how you would do chunking and compression. So I'm just going to make this random data set and create an NWB file. And then I'm just going to do the simple thing here, which is just to take my data and wrap it in a data pipe object without any 
um, additional parameters. And, um, <clears throat> and then I'm going to take this and put it inside a time series right where I would have normally put data. I'm putting it right in that same spot. And then I'm just going to put that time series in acquisition because that's just the simplest place to put it. And I'm going to export this. Now, after you export this, you can open it up in HDF view and you can actually view the compression settings that we've used here. If you look down here at the bottom, the, um, it, first of all, it says that we've chunked the data 63 by 64. So it's um, Matt and WB has chosen this chunk size. Um, and then compression, it says we're using GZIP compression level 3, and we've established a compression ratio of 4.2 to 1, which basically means that this data is taking up only 24% of the, of the size that it would if it were uncompressed. So this is a huge improvement, so this could be really helpful. And this is, I'll remind you, for random data. So if it can compress random data, um, it can likely compress your data. And this is the size of this particular data set, which is 1.9 megabytes. Now you can use additional fields on the data pipe argument. Here I'm just going to show you if I want to alter the chunk size. Now the chunk size before was 63 by 64, which was reasonable, but let's try to change it to one by a thousand. So um, you can do that. You end up with exactly the same data in in the array, but now it's stored differently. It's stored in chunks of 1,000 by 1. We've slightly reduced the compression ratio. The compression is still pretty good, but um, before we had a compression ratio of 4.2, and now we have a compression ratio of 3.9, which means that the size of this data set is going to be a little bit bigger. It's useful to think when you're doing chunks to think about how you plan on reading this data because you want data that's going to be read at the same time to be in the same chunk. So it might be that this 1000 by 1 chunking is actually better for you in your particular use case. Now let's move on to iterative writing. So this is when you have a situation where you have so much data that you don't necessarily want to fit it into RAM. So we're going to show you how to um, write a small portion of the data set, load your file back in, and then append to that data set. And this allows you to um, load data, save data, load data, save data. Um, so it allows you to create a really large data set larger than your RAM would allow you to do if you were doing it all at once. So the code to do this is, again, we're going to generate some random data, and we're going to set a um, we're going to say what the full size of the data set is. Even though we don't have all of that data right now, we know that it's going to be 40,000 by 1. So we're going to create this data type object, input our partial data set, but tell it, the data type object what the maximum size of this data set is going to be. And then we're also going to specify that we're appending data on axis 1. Now we create our time series object, put this data pipe object in instead of the data, just like we did before, um, set it into acquisition, and then export this into the um, NWB file on disk. Now what we can do is read in this data set and append to it using this command. So we're going to, um, to read it, we're going to have this little for loop, generate some additional random data inside of that for loop, and then find that data set in acquisition time series dot data, and call the append command on this new part of the data in this for loop. And um, by the end of this, what we'll have is a, um, is a 40,000 by one data set that we didn't have to load into memory all at once. So as you can imagine, this would be really useful for streaming data as well. So if you have a situation where you're streaming data within MATLAB, you should consider using the append method on a data pipe object. Okay, so wrapping up, we've covered two different techniques for dealing with large data sets here. One is chunking compression, and the other is iterative write. Now, um, you 
will often be in a case where you want to use both. If you have large data, you want it to be efficiently stored on disk and efficiently um, manipulated in the system's RAM. And you can do that very easily here. There's no reason at all why you couldn't mess with the compression levels while doing the appending. Your compression must stay the same for the entire data set, but you can um, do your compression um, and set your, your axis that you want to append the data to and set a max shape. You can, they're not mutually exclusive. And in fact, we would encourage you to do both. Now, we are just showing you how to use gzip compression here, which is because MATLAB's HDF5 library only uses gzip compression. And this is the best option if you really care about um, things working cross-platform and cross-language. Basically, it, gzip ships with HDF5. So if someone can, has HDF5, then they will have gzip. Um, but HDF5 can also support a number of other compression algorithms. And um, if you're interested in exploring these other algorithms, you can check out the PyNWB Advanced Write Tutorial, which allows you to access these other options. Okay, that's it. Thank you for listening, and good luck with your data.